I think when we look at the strategic intent of the Australian curriculum, when you look at those those themes that run across the whole curriculum, there's some really interesting things that, that come out. Um, what I'd like to do is to share with you some of the thoughts of the people that actually put the curriculum together. So first of all, let's hear from Peter Freebody talking about the English curriculum. So at different times in history, people have construed of literacy as basically being about developing oral or written language skills, or basically learning about rhetoric or grammar, or basically being about uh, literature. Those are three knowledge areas that are important in their own right, but what good English teachers have done is brought them together and used them to play against and with one another in motivational ways and through the school years to build on that relationship between those three areas. The big challenge was clarifying that and enunciating that as a, as a, as a core principle and background for the project. In the primary years, uh, I think there will be more of an intense focus on the use of uh, literature on teachers. I hope it will encourage teachers to deal with fewer texts more deeply and that will put pressure on them to discuss with their colleagues what are really good texts that will bear that kind of attention and still be motivating and engaging. But what I would hope uh, that the new English curriculum would encourage is that some of a lot of what students learn about language uh, will actually transfer very directly to the kinds of tasks that they face, speaking and in writing as well, uh, across different curriculum areas. So I would hope that the new English curriculum will enable teachers who work in conditions that are not optimal, that it's not just a set of statements about wouldn't it be lovely if we could teach English like this, that it is rich enough and affirming enough to teachers and giving them challenges that they think will be worth the effort, that they can adapt what this curriculum holds for them into the real conditions in which they work. And Dennis Goodrum talks about the science curriculum, I think in a, a really sophisticated way, something that we've not seen before in lots of our curricula. The other guiding principle is that we've emphasised learning uh, for understanding, as distinct from learning scientific knowledge. The first difference is the actual amount in the curriculum. We hope that people will perceive that there is less quantity, but more quality. Less in quantity, more in quality. I think that point that Dennis makes about learning for understanding rather than for learning for knowledge is represents that fundamental shift that we've seen in that strategic intent of the Australian curriculum. You know, there's a real shift there um, away from, you know, just instructing the kids, you know, the structure of what we teach much more towards the structure of what the, 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 the students are learning, the structure of their experiences and where they've got to. And I think that's something that's, that's quite different in the Australian curriculum. And some clips from Peter Sullivan about the mathematics curriculum and the, the intent of the maths and those, those links that we, that we really want to get out of the mathematics. There are too many curriculums around the country that are just a whole lot of disconnected points. And this curriculum is, is succinct, it's clear, and it identifies the important parts of mathematics. Another thing is that there should be less in it. And the reason for that's important is because currently teachers race from one topic to another to another before the students have an opportunity to understand it. And, and this, is, this will help everyone learn mathematics better, but particularly with the best students, they can go in great depth to the topics they've done and really extend themselves in meaningful and significant ways and really do mathematics. The, the real hope is that students will engage in doing mathematics in their maths classes. We've tried to describe the verbs, if you like, the actions that they'll do as understanding, fluency, problem solving and reasoning. And they're combined, uh, integrated into the curriculum. Previously, in some curriculums, they've been separated out. Now we see that it's central. It's central to doing maths, it's central to learning mathematics. And if teachers can use those verbs as a way of guiding the actions that students do in class, that'll actually change the nature of mathematics classrooms. Well, look, one of the key things we're emphasising in the curriculum is how mathematics is used. And of course, it's not possible to understand the world unless you're looking at it in mathematically in some, some ways. So in terms of historical facts, in terms of timelines, in terms of social decision making, uh, in terms of using data to explain situations, these are all mathematical acts. 
and the challenge is for teachers in schools to take the mathematical ideas in the maths curriculum and marry them up with the history, the, the English and the science curriculum as well. There's obviously great synergies between science and mathematics and we're, we're, the writers have met uh, to try and make a, the alignment as good as possible and so hopefully teachers will see there are opportunities for them to, to build links between those two curriculum areas especially. And so, you know, perhaps, perhaps other curriculum in the past have driven us towards thinking about um, student learning in really fragmented ways. You know, when we look at the, the content, we're looking at snapshots. And so we'll assess this bit of the um, learning and understanding. Then we'll assess this bit and this bit and this bit. And so we get lots of fragmentation um, in our assessment. And we really don't get the big picture view of our students as learners. The Australian curriculum really starts, if we see it as these themes about that, that connectivity, the Australian curriculum really allows us to bring that out. And so we can really see that big picture. So we can step back and further back and further back and see that big picture of our students as learners in any of the subjects in mathematics, in English, in science, in history. But it really is that focus on the big picture. Sometimes we're going to have to come back and we are going to have to interrogate the detail. And we are going to, and that's really what the achievement standards allow us to do, is to get in there and look at the detail. But we mustn't lose sight of the big picture. The strategic intent of the Australian curriculum is to not lose sight of the big picture. So that point that Dennis Goodrum makes about the shift from um, learning for knowledge to learning for understanding, I think really is at the core of the intention of the Australian curriculum. And what it how it reflects itself in student learning is, you know, we used to think about how much do students know. You know, we used to reward students for knowing lots of stuff. And now, in this shift to learning for understanding, the focus is shifting to how well do students understand it? How well have they developed a concept? How well can they use their understanding? And so it's not about you know, teaching them algorithms and you know, how, if they can apply this algorithm and then they can apply it to something else and they can apply it to something else. But it's about stopping and thinking, thinking, well, what, which of my strategies should I use and which would be the most appropriate? And so really digging deeply into the understanding from knowledge, their understanding of process, being able to put it all together in problem solving and those kinds of things.